Good morning. God is good. And the writer says to us out of Chronicles 16, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. God dwells in the midst of the praises of his people. And so let us praise him this morning. And let us pray. Lord, everything that we have comes from you. You are in every moment. You are in all of our victories, and you are the light in every tunnel that we have passed through. And so, Lord, today we come to praise your name for all of that and then some. We ask, Lord, that you take the distractions that we have experienced, we release them to you, and we take up the joy of knowing you. We pray that this morning as we come into this space collectively, here in, in my presence in this church, but also, Lord, beyond, we are all united in you, that everywhere we are, you are present, Lord. Enable us this morning to come to know you even better, just as you know us. Be in every part of the service, Lord, from the music ministry and the media ministry, Lord, all the way to our pastor. We pray that you continue to use him to be the servant that you have called him to be. Bless him, Lord, and utilize him as the good steward that you've called him to be so that we might receive a word that becomes life within us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And the opening hymn is Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Thank you, Reverend Hunter. Welcome, happy Sunday morning, everybody. 
On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Wesley A. Roberts, it is my privilege to welcome each and every one of you to our live stream worship service here at People's Baptist Church. As always, we're so glad that you're with us today, whether you're here in the sanctuary or attending via live stream. We pray that it would be a blessing to you that you would join us in worshiping the Lord. As the psalmist says, magnify the Lord with us and exalt his name together. If this is your first time with us, we're so glad to have you join us and we pray that something that is said or sung will be a blessing to you so that you would want to join us again next time we gather. Once again, thank you for being with us. God bless you and welcome. At this time, we're going to have a musical selection sung by Sister Cindy Lowe, accompanied by Reverend Stephen Hunter. Thank you. 
Sister Cindy, that was wonderful. The scripture is James chapter 1, verse 2 through 8. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. The word of the Lord for his people. Amen. We will now have the uh, opportunity to bring our tithes, our offerings to God. This is our act of worship, one of the many things we do to worship the Lord our God. And so as you're preparing your hearts and your minds, remember this, this isn't dues, we're not paying for anything. This is an act of worship. We're worshiping the God who has given us and continues to give us everything by bringing our gifts and our sacrifices to him. Here at People's Baptist Church, we have many ways to give. They're enumerated on the screen if you're watching us via live stream. If you're here in the sanctuary, there's a basket in the back in which you may place your offerings and your sacrifices. But let's give willingly, let's give cheerfully. I can't see it, but I suspect that you all are smiling behind those masks. If you're not, please smile so we can be cheerful givers to the God who continues to bless us with everything. Would you please join me in a word of prayer? Gracious Father, we thank you. We thank you for this privilege and we count it just that, a privilege and an opportunity for us to bring our sacrifices and our gifts to you. We are fully cognizant of the fact that we're only giving you back a portion of all you've given us and a small portion of that at that. But we thank you that you would count them as offerings, as gifts, as sacrifices, and that you would use them to build your kingdom and to spread your gospel. Count us as co-laborers in what you're doing, God. We want to be part of your great work in this world. So receive these gifts, we pray, and Lord, for those who may not have to give, we pray you would continue to bless them that the next time we gather, they too can worship you with a portion of their substance. This we ask Jesus in your precious name. Amen. Our hymn of meditation this morning is a great hymn of the church sung by Sister Cindy Lowe, Love Lifted Me.
Amen. Love lifted me. Thank you, Sister Lowe. Good morning to my People's Baptist Church family. Good morning to our guests and friends and family members who have joined us for this worship service today, coming to you from the historic sanctuary of People's Baptist Church of Boston. We're delighted that you've chosen to join us for worship, and we expect that the Lord is going to pour his blessings out on us, because whenever we come into the house of the Lord to worship him, we can expect a blessing if our hearts are right and if we are expecting him to bless us. The title of the message today is from one of the scriptures we're using, Lord, make our faith stronger. Lord, make our faith stronger. But let me begin with an illustration on faith that I've used uh, two or three times here at Peoples. George Muller of Bristol, England, is one of those Christians who belong in Faith's Hall of Fame. He was traveling on a ship from England to Quebec City, Canada. The captain of the ship is the one who is telling the story. He said, I've been on the bridge for 24 hours because of the thick fog. When George Muller came to me and said, Captain, I have come to tell you that I must be in Quebec on Saturday afternoon. It's impossible, I said. Then, very well, if your ship cannot take me, then God will find some other way. I've never broken an engagement in 57 years. Let's go down to the chart room and pray. I looked at that man of God and thought to myself, what lunatic asylum can that man have come from? For I've never heard anything like this. Mr. Muller, I said, do you know how dense the fog is? No, he replied. My eye is not on the density of the fog, but on the living God who controls every circumstance of my life. He knelt down and he prayed one of the simplest prayers, said the ship's captain. When he had finished praying, I was going to pray, but he put his hand on my shoulder and said, as you do not believe God will answer, and I believe he has, there's no need for you uh, to pray about it. So I looked at him. And George Muller said, Captain, I have known the Lord for 57 years, and there has never been a single day when I have failed to get an audience with the king. Get up, Captain, and open the door, and you will find the fog has gone. I got up, and the fog indeed was gone. And on that Saturday afternoon, George Muller kept his promised engagement in Quebec. In the annals of Christianity, there are numerous stories of people who dared to take God at his word and have never been disappointed. How do you get faith like that? How can our faith be increased? We are not unique in our concern about the weakness of our faith. The disciples of Jesus also had that, that concern and that problem. In fact, in Luke chapter 17 and verse 5, we read, The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. And the contemporary English translation says, Make our faith stronger. All of us as Christians would like to have more faith, stronger faith. 
The question is how? If faith is what makes our life rewarding and fulfilling, how does God increase our faith? God increases or strengthens our faith by testing it. Faith grows and becomes stronger as it is tested. Every day we have faith-building opportunities. The problem is most of us don't recognize them. We don't realize that God is using the difficulties and the problems of our lives to increase or to make our faith stronger. I want to suggest three ways that God tests our faith so that it can grow and be strong. First, we grow in faith through difficulties. I'm speaking about trials, problems, pressures, and tough circumstances. The Apostle Peter in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 7 writing to the Christians who had been persecuted as they uh, dispersed across Asia Minor. Peter said, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. The trials, problems, and difficulties that come into our life come to test and to strengthen our faith as believers in Christ. Nothing is ever by accident in the life of a follower of Jesus Christ. Everything is father filtered. Nothing comes into our life without God's permission. There are accidents in life, of course, but God uses them so that our disappointments become his appointments. Sometimes God has to custom make a problem to teach us faith. The prophet Jonah had a custom-made problem. The great fish swallowed him and got his attention. And sometimes God creates problems that swallow us up, overwhelm us, so that we are forced to call upon God. And we feel like Jonah in Jonah chapter 2 and verse 7, where Jonah said, As my life was slipping away, I remembered the Lord and my earnest prayer went out to you in your holy temple. God uses the circumstances of our life to test our faith. If life was easy, it wouldn't require any faith. If you could feel God's presence at all times, you would just go by your feelings. Sometimes God removes the feeling of his presence just so we would learn to trust him in the difficult circumstances that we are facing. Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 10 says, I have refined you, but not as silver is refined. Rather, I have refined you in the furnace of suffering. The Bible often compares our problems and difficulties to a furnace. The furnace heats up so high that all the impurities in the gold or silver are burned away. An old silversmith was once asked, how do you know when the impurities are burned away in the silver? And he said, when I can see my reflection in the silver. So when God can see his reflection, in us, then he knows that we are serious about our faith, that we um, are in a position that he can bless us and use us. So the question is, what should I do when I'm going through difficulties? How should I respond? 
The Bible tells us in James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3 in the contemporary English version, it says, my friends, be glad even if you have a lot of trouble. You know that you learn to endure by having your faith tested. Now, James is saying, when I have trials in my life, I should rejoice, I should take it easy, I should thank God, I should praise him. Why? Because I know that God is with me and that he has a purpose for my life and he's going to help me to get through whatever situation I find myself in. God's purpose is greater than the pain or the problem or the difficulty we are going through right now. If we want to learn to live by faith, we must rejoice continually in spite of the situations we are in. God uses difficulties to build our faith. He builds our faith not in the easy times of life, but in the difficult times. These times give God an opportunity to reveal his grace, his love, his power, his wisdom, his mercy, as well as his blessings in very special ways. The testing of our faith may come in a variety of ways. It may come as a financial setback. It may come as a diseased body. It may come as an emotional breakdown. It may come through a broken relationship. It may come as a result of a death in the family. It may come through a natural disaster. But brothers and sisters, we need to realize that God's purpose in allowing difficulties, adverse circumstances, and afflictions to come upon us is to help us, not to hurt us, to bless us, not to burden us, to refine us, not to ruin us, to train us, and not to torment us. But the second point is we grow in faith through giving. We grow in faith through giving. Do you know that money is one of the greatest tests of faith? Few people understand how God uses our material possessions as a test of character and a test of our faith. In Luke 16 and verse, verses 10 and 11, Jesus says, If you're faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And so what is Jesus talking about here? He is giving us a truth that is taught throughout scripture, that there is a direct relationship between how I handle my money and the depth of my spiritual life. Money is a test of our faith in God, whether we recognize that it comes from God, whether we recognize that we will be blessed when we give generously. He is a generous God and we are his children and so we ought to be generous in our giving not just to the church, but also to uh, the various needs that we see within our communities. What I do with my money really determines how much God can bless my life. Every time I sit down and write a check for my tithes, knowing that I could be using that money to pay bills and do some other things with it, my faith is being tested. Writing to the Corinthian Christians, the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 7, but since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also exceed in this grace of giving. Giving tests both our love and our faith. 
how much do I really love God? How much do I trust him? Do I put my money where my mouth is? If we have a problem giving a tithe to the Lord to support his work, then we will also have a problem with the teaching of the scriptures. The fact is that every time I give tithes to the Lord, my faith grows. Every time I give, it breaks the grip of materialism in my life. Every time I give, I grow in love, in faith, and in spiritual maturity. In 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 13 and 14, David says to God, after the Israelites had given a great um, uh, amount of, of, um, of money uh, for the building of the temple, David says, O oh, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you, and we give you only what you first gave us. What David is saying is that giving not only tests our faith and our love, but also the integrity of our heart. God wants to be the Lord of every area of my life and yours. How much faith in God does our giving reveals? If God looked at your giving last year, would he say that you really trust him and that you're in love with him? It is interesting that in giving, God not only tests our faith, but the Bible says that giving tests God as well. In Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10, in the contemporary English version, it says, I am the Lord all-powerful, and I challenge you to put me to the test. Bring the entire 10% into the storehouse, so there will be food in my house. Then I will open the windows of heaven and flood you with blessing after blessing. It is, it is as if God is saying, I'm going to play a game with you. You give to me and I will give to you and we'll see who wins. <laughs> I dare you put, I dare you to put God to the test to see if he will keep his promise, and we know that he does keep his promises. Many of us have grown more in faith in the area of giving than in any other area of our life. Someone has said, the most sensitive nerve in the human body goes from the wallet to the heart. God says, I, I really I want you I, read, I want all of you. I want what you, your giving represents. That it um, represents your faith in me. But the third point is we grow in faith through waiting. We grow in faith through waiting. If every prayer was immediately answered, if every need was automatically met, if every problem was instantly solved, we wouldn't need faith, and our faith wouldn't need to be stretched. But it's not that way. We have to wait on the Father when we talk to him and ask his, his help. Now it is human nature that we hate to wait. You go to the supermarket and when you are ready to check out, you look for the shortest line because you don't want to wait. You're traveling on the highway, and you notice that traffic is backed up, so you take an alternate route because you hate waiting. We hate waiting lines. We hate waiting to be served. We hate waiting to see the doctor, especially when we go to the emergency room. Yet a large percentage of our life is spent waiting. If you and I can can't learn how God 
wants to stretch and grow our faith during times of waiting, we will miss out on much of the faith lessons that God wants to teach us. A good example of this is the people of Israel on their way from Egypt to the Promised Land. They could have made the journey in two or three weeks, but it ended up taking them 40 years. Why all this wasted time? Because God was more interested in developing their faith than in getting them from point A to point B the fastest way. The Bible says in Deuteronomy, speaking of this um, uh, experience, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2, remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for 40, for 40 years, or these 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you would obey his commands. That's what it happens in times of waiting. God gets to see what's in our heart. Do you ever find yourself in situations where you are in a hurry but God isn't? Why does that happen? Because God is more interested in growing our faith than anything else. So we start asking the when questions while we are waiting. When is my marriage going to get better? When am I going to find the right person and get married? When am I going to get the job I've been waiting for? When am I going to get well? So waiting can develop our faith more than we realize. Some of you are waiting on something right now. Maybe you have been waiting a long time. But while you are waiting, God is there with you. He will not leave you alone. God uses difficulties, he uses money, and he uses delays to increase and strengthen our faith. Look at what God does. Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 4 says, For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you, who works for those who wait for him. It pays to be patient. Just remember this. While you are waiting, God is working. He is doing things behind the scenes in your heart and other people's heart that you cannot see. If I'm really going to grow in faith, then I have to be prepared to wait patiently. God is not going to snap his fingers and give instant answers to my every prayer. Why not? Because God wants me and you to grow in our faith. Although waiting may try our patience, we will discover sooner or later the truth of the scripture that God will never leave us nor forsake us. In our mountain of misery, God is our comfort. In our bed of sorrow, God is our joy. In our furnace of affliction, God is our strength. In our hour of decision, God is our wisdom. And in our time of despair, God is our hope. God has promised his children a safe landing on the shores of eternity. But this does not mean that there will always be a calm passage. The ocean of life may appear to be too large for our small vessels. And the waves may seem so big and the storms may seem so fierce. But we know that God will see us through to that golden celestial shore. For when Christ is on board the ship, no matter how small, it will not and cannot sink. So what if circumstances may obstruct your goal? What if difficulties may test your faith? What if adversity may deny your happiness? What if suffering may overwhelm our bodies? And what if disease may shorten our lives here on earth? 
we know that God is still God and by his grace and mercy everything will be all right with us. For he is our hope and therefore we can face each day, each trial, each adversity, each problem and each situation with full confidence in the one who has led us thus far and therefore will continue to lead us safely home. By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we have overcome, for we will understand it better by and by. Amen. Sister Sims is always going to be singing that hymn of discipleship for us. Let us use the opportunity to, to uh, make a commitment to Christ if you have not yet done so. And I can promise you that you will never regret any decision you make to make Christ the Lord of your life. And he'll be there with you, whatever the circumstances may be. And you will reach safely home one of these days. Understand it better by and by. Amen. Let us join our hearts together in prayer, church, as we go before the throne of grace. 
Once again, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege and this opportunity to come before you. We thank you, God, because you have been and continue to be gracious to us. We thank you for your abundant compassion and your overwhelming love. We thank you for how time and time and time and time again you have blessed us, you have brought us through, you helped us to get over, you helped us to get around. God, we thank you because we can easily remember times when we didn't know how we were going to make it. We didn't know how we were going to get through. But God, you never left us. You never forsook us. You stayed right there. You walked with us through the valley of the shadow of death and you brought us out. And God, for those so many times, we say thank you. We thank you for when we were sick and didn't think we'd get better, God. We thank you for when we got to the end of our money and still had too much month left over. We thank you, God, for all those times when we just wanted to throw in the towel at that job and somehow you made a way. We thank you, God, for those times when we didn't have a job and you made a way. God, you have been and continue to be our God and we say thank you. God, we come to you this morning and we thank you for this morning's message. What a great message, God the difficulties that we go through. Help us to see them through your eyes, that you're using them to increase our faith in you, that when we're waiting, and you know how much we hate to wait, God, that you're using that to increase our faith in you, and that when we have these opportunities to give, God, you're using that to increase our faith in you. Thank you, God, for these many blessings. Thank you for that message today. And Help us to live it, God, not just to have heard it, not just to call the pastor and thank him for giving us a good message, but help us to live this message that we become stronger in you. Lord, you know the needs that are present in this congregation and those who are attending uh, this service, whether here in person or live stream. You know all of our needs, God. You know what we're facing. God, you know better than we know. And so we bring all of these concerns to you. We cast these cares upon you because we know you care for us. We know that if we entrust these things to you, God, you will handle them in a way that we can't even imagine far better than we could ask or imagine. And so, Lord, help us to give them over to you, to leave them with you, to take our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Not take them back after the prayer is over, but leave them there so that you can work through while we're waiting all the things we need to have happen. God, we ask your blessings on the international level. You, that war in Ukraine is still going on. We thank you for the moves that you're making, the things that you are doing that seems to be slowing it down. But God, we continue to pray. Your people continue to pray to you, Lord. End that war and end it well for Ukraine. Lord, we know that there, that's not the only conflict on our globe. There are conflicts all over. We know about Ethiopia. We're praying that you would intervene there, God, and bring your peace. Lord, we're asking you to continue to bless here in our city. God, we need your help at every level as they're starting to reopen the city. We're praying that there's not another spike and another surge. Protect those who are on the front lines, God. Protect our teachers, protect our administrators, protect those who are in the medical area, our bus drivers, our train drivers, our supermarket workers, all of those who interface with the public every single day, Lord, give them grace, give them strength, protect, preserve, and keep them, God. We pray your blessings upon our government at the highest levels. We pray as we are moving forward towards the uh, certification of this new Supreme Court nominee, Lord, bless her, keep her. Thank you for the grace she has exhibited under ridiculous pressure, God. Thank you. I doubt I have that much grace, Lord, but thank you for giving it to her. And we pray that you would bring this nomination through successfully. We pray for our president and our vice president, our governor and our mayor. We ask your blessings upon our city council. And as always, God, we ask your blessings right here at People's Baptist Church. Let us continue to be a beacon of light, Lord, a symbol of hope, an edifice that says that, God, you are still alive and you are still on the throne. 
and you still love your people. Bless our pastor, continue to bless him as he leads and guides us. Continue to lead and guide him so that we're all heading in the right direction in alignment with you. We thank you for what you have done, God. We thank you for what you're doing right now and what you will do. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for worshiping with us today. We know that heaven is pleased when we on earth give worship and praise to God our Father and to our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to say thank you to Sister Cindy Lowe for her ministry in music uh, today. You have blessed our, our hearts, uh, Cindy, and uh, you have um, moved us up a little bit higher uh, from the way in which you have presented your music. And I also want to say thank you to Reverend Stephen Hunter, our guest organist, uh, for his uh, ministry to us uh, um, each, each week. We'll, we'll probably miss him next, next week, but um, he is um, committed to being with us here whenever he can. So thank you so much. And um, thanks to Reverend David Wright for that beautiful pastoral prayer lifting up the needs and concerns, not only of this congregation, but of the world in which we live, and the horrible situation that uh, is going on in Ukraine. And we know that God is still on the throne, and he will uh, bring peace in his own time. So let's continue to pray for, for uh, Ukraine and the situation there all the refugees, uh, of more than three million refugees, most of, at least one half of them are children, and um, women and children. We also thank um, Reverend Dr. Jacqueline Dyer for her presence here with us and uh, for her ministry uh, as a part of uh, my team here at People's Baptist Church. We we are seeking to do God's, um, God's work here, and we have been at it now, at least the church has been at it, for 217 years. Uh, for the past two years, we have been uh, unable to, to meet for in-person worship in a normal way, and we plan to uh, go back to in-person worship uh, next uh, Sunday, the first Sunday in April. Uh, we... Um, we will have, uh, well, most of you are members of the church have received my letter to, which outlines the, the things that we'll be doing. And we know that um, you will cooperate and, and um, allow uh, the worship of God to go, go forth in a way that is pleasing to him and that we can continue to rejoice and give thanks for his goodness to us. Yeah, so. We will, um, uh, at least for those people who are uh, listening from, uh, from uh, across the country or from other countries, we will begin with a limit of um, 100 uh, worshipers, um, and then that can be changed any time, but at least we will begin with uh, 100 worshipers here in the sanctuary. We will continue to wear masks, and um, we'll also be social distanced. Um, we, we will maintain our service at 10 o'clock, as we have been doing for the past, uh, uh, past two years. And uh, we know that God is going to continue to bless us, uh, because this is his church. And uh, we know that he will always take care of his church. And uh, I know the churches across this, um, this um, country and across the world have been blessed in different ways during this pandemic. And so we are looking forward to God's blessing as, as the congregation begins to get back together uh, so that uh, we can have in-person worship. There's something about when we get together, not virtually, but when we get together in person, 
and just the joy of seeing each other and, and um, hearing uh, the greetings of, of each other. So we look forward to next, uh, next Sunday, which is our first Sunday back after two years of, um, of um, being away from one another. Well, we have come to the close of the service, and I want to say uh, thank you also to Brother Brandon Yard and, um, and to um, our Brother Brooks for uh, their ministry behind the camera. And we know that um, the Lord has been good to us, and we will continue this ministry of live streaming our worship service, so that will not end. And um, we know that God will continue to bless this old ship of Zion. Uh, so we, we give him thanks and praise. And now as we close our service, uh, Reverend Hunter will play for us, God be with you. Him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and always. <laughs>